Whew. Jonas here. Winter is finally coming, which means that many of you are probably starting to plan for the ski season. But it also means that you gotta brush up on your safety skills, especially when it comes to avalanches. I love this powder, deep soft powder snow. Love skiing in it, but it comes with the risk of course. Backcountry skiing is usually associated with a greater risk of avalanches. So if you plan to do this, you have to be prepared. And there are several different factors that affect the likeliness of an avalanche to happen. And the first one is the angle of the slope. It is generally said that an avalanche can occur when the slope is 25 degrees or greater. And then you ask me, how am I supposed to know the angle of the slope? Well, I'm glad you asked, because there are some simple ways you can test how steep the slope is. And one is using your ski poles. Lay one of your ski poles on the slope and make a mark at both ends. Resting on the uphill mark, tip it up and let the second ski pole hang off of the downhill end. Adjust the angle so the hanging ski pole just touches the snow. And this is a lot easier if it's not super windy. You know your math, right? If it touches right on the downhill mark you made, we get a triangle with all sides the same. Each angle inside is 60 degrees and the slope has a 30 degree angle. They add up to 90, right? 25 degree slope will be if the ski pole touches just inside of the mark and anything outside will be greater than 30 degree slope angle, meaning bigger risk. And another thing is to know the direction of the slope. Research shows that most avalanches occur on the north and northeast sides of mountains in the northern hemisphere. And one reason for this is that the south sides experience more sun and therefore a greater difference between uh, day and night temperatures. The more sun will result in the snow getting more evenly packed, as opposed to the north side, where there's a greater risk of the snow developing layers through different times of snowfall. The problem is that these layers may also result in unstable snow that can cause an avalanche. And now we have weather and wind. The windward side and the leeward side of a mountain are also important. If one side of the mountain more often experiences strong winds than the other side, this can blow a lot of the fresh snow away, which then can settle on the leeward side. And as the snow then settles and builds up, this increases the chances of an avalanche a lot. Ultimately, every mountain is different. Wind and weather conditions, snow, and many other factors will affect the likeliness of an avalanche to happen. Remember, there's no complete rule to this. Avalanches are unpredictable. So I recommend taking a course in both how to prevent getting in an avalanche, but then definitely how to do search and rescue missions for people after an avalanche has happened. You can't learn all this from a book or a video. You gotta get out here in the snow. So come out, have fun, but do it safe. All right, see you next week. I hope you enjoyed that one and that you're all enjoying the beginning of winter. Make sure you still subscribe because we have more videos coming out every week and feel free to contact us if you have a project you think we should collaborate on.